news. And welcome to Live from Infocom. Uh, my name is Lloyd Bunting with VidiLink. And I'm John Poole with Kumu. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to be sharing our views of what we've seen in the last couple days at, uh, here at Infocom. Um, what you're going to be seeing on the screen is a video of the two of us discussing, as well as a series of slides that we've provided as uh, visual aids, and as well as some additional links and other things you can be able to pull by uh, clicking on the, uh, the menu button on the upper right-hand uh, portion of the screen. So yep. before we get started, John, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about uh, Kumu? Sure. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Kumu, Kumu is a company that's a publicly traded company. We're based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have uh, global presence in uh, all the major theaters around the world. And historically, where we have been selling has been to large Global 2000 customers who are trying to establish video communications with their employees. Um, what we do in those, in those enterprises is really five different things. We help enterprises create videos of all kinds. We help them manage um, and secure those videos so only the right people can get to them. Uh, we also help those enterprises distribute the video so that uh, they don't have any issues with uh, taking down an entire network when there's a broadcast going on. And then probably most importantly is measuring the effectiveness of video. Everyone's using video today, but it's getting more difficult to get the analytics and the insight as to who's using it, how long are they using it, and how effective are the videos. So, and we do that all for the, um, for the large enterprise, for internal audiences. That's really the sweet spot mm -hmm. for Kumu. So, Lloyd, you're with VideoLink, and you are part of the AVISPL family. Yep, Maybe you could share with the audience a little bit more about who VideoLink is. Yep, the proud part of the AVISPL family. VideoLink's been around for 25 years. We're based in Boston. We're a video production services and technology company. Uh, we provide all things as it relates to creation and distribution of video. We have uh, video production crews that go on location to do uh, uh, productions, live productions, or recorded productions for companies and mm -hmm. for the networks as well. Uh, we have studios in Boston, Philadelphia, and Baltimore where we can do multi-camera productions as well as we actually have insert studios to put people on TV who do uh, interviews with CNN, CNBC, and, and the like. We have a, a creative arm, a, a creative arm called VL Creative, which, uh, which uh, provides all the, um, uh, all the conceptual uh, elements of figuring out what a video might be, a series of videos might be, uh, what the themes might be, and ultimately help deliver it to, uh, ultimately to its, its, its final delivery. So really concept to conception, in effect. And the third leg of our business is a ReadyCam studio, which is an on-premise, remotely controlled studio that we have in 185 locations around, uh, around the country. Which is exactly what we're using right now. To exactly. We're, that, generate we're, we're, this we're broadcasting this event live at uh, Infocom from a ReadyCam studio. Which is actually here on the floor. Um, I, I, for those people who are watching this webcast and have either never been to Infocom or did not have an opportunity to see Infocom this year, Maybe we could just talk a little bit about like what's going on around us and, and, and what are we seeing just in general. Sure. Um, I'll start. Uh, okay. I guess one of the things is this has always been one of the largest shows I've ever attended um, in my career in the uh, video communication business. Uh, so this, this, this show is not uh, any different than any of the past shows I've seen. It, it's been a very big turnout. There have been a huge diversity of buyers that have actually attended here. They're not just uh, people to looking at dressing up a conference room. I mean, these people are very diverse in terms of stadiums and auditoriums and a variety of different use cases that they have. So I think that was very interesting. And the floor and the vendors, the way they're laid out here today, um, there's a unified communications pavilion. There's a interactive digital signage. So digital signage that we're seeing today is not your mother's digital signage. It's more of an interactive type of an experience with people that are using it. Mm -hmm. um, lots of uh, uh, visual peripherals, document cameras and such, and lots of management tools. So uh, heavy presence of uh, software vendors offering things to make it easier to implement video communications within their, oh, their enterprise. So anyway, what you're on a different side of yeah. the floor. What did you see? Well, we've had a number of, a lot of conversations with folks who've been coming over to our booth. But like as I mentioned, we have a live ReadyCam studio here, so we've been able to garner a lot of attention from people who come by to just think, Gee, what is this thing? Right. Okay. Um, as well as we've uh, had a lot of folks, uh, customers of AVI, AVI, AVI SPL, who have come by, major corporations, universities, uh, some financial firms, 
Um, and it's, it, it's, been, it's been interesting. It, it, kind of, it kind of mirrors a lot of the trends we're seeing in the market right now. Um, first of all, the use cases around video changing. Uh, it used to be training. It used to be uh, much more tactical in nature. And now it's going really quick. Everyone's talking about enterprise, town meetings, enterprise communications, um, using video for marketing, using video for sales. Uh, much more strategic uses yes, than in the past. For uh, sure. We definitely live in a uh, video age where everybody is used to using video and that's becoming uh, proliferated in a much bigger way, this well, show. People, this are time becoming, yeah, people are becoming more comfortable with it, so they're more, they're more willing to use it for more strategic purposes. Um, video is using, being used, interestingly enough, a number of people have come to us and said they're using video for things they used to do email with before. Huh. So again, it's around short messaging. As opposed to doing it via email, which used to be the, you know, the, the norm, they're finding that the, that the engagement with video is so much higher. And executives are, when they're trying to get a message across the company, uh, they're relying on video more and more because of the, the engagement that's much, that much higher. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen the same thing. Um, interesting enough that we're talking about uh, the ubiquity of video and how people have gotten more used to it. They're becoming the users, and again, I've been told this multiple times by people, <coughs> the users are, are um, much more intolerant of, of, of imperfect video. Video that is, has poor audio, video that has poor lighting, if it doesn't look really good, they're right. tuning out. Right, right. It plays a big role on how effective a piece of video content is yeah. if you take into consideration those aspects. And with the measuring tools available now, especially if you're with the platforms like yours, People, the, 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 the management can see how long people are watching video. And they right. can actually see that a poor video, they're seeing that the results of poor video are getting short viewing times versus more produced video, which is producing uh, longer viewing times and better engagement. See the same thing. <clears throat> Another thing which is interesting is that, is that um, IT is becoming more and more involved in the actual delivery of video events, especially live video events which um, I think has been a big sea change over the years. And one of the challenges with that, with that what I'm hearing, we're hearing from the IT professionals is they're not, IT, they're not video professionals, no. but they're being tasked with this challenge, which kind of leads to um, uh, one, of the, one of the next things that, um, that uh, I was, uh, gonna, uh, we picked up is that the tools for producing video have improved, but the, but the skills haven't. So again, you're seeing a lot of user-generated video. You're seeing things being done with iPhones, which iPhones actually produce darn good video. That's true. <clears throat> but the people that are producing them aren't skilled at producing it, so they're producing lousy video. <laughs> it's, it, so it comes back to the thing where you have lousy video, you have lousy engagement, which is a frustration point. Um, yes. The other thing people are doing is they're trying, especially as it relates to the IT professionals who are, um, who are uh, uh, doing a lot of videos, they're trying to cobble together live events, in particular utilizing the tools that they're familiar with, like video conferencing systems and video conference cameras and the bridging services for endpoint capture, um, for using collaboration tools like Skype or Zoom, <laughs> things that are great for collaboration, great for the everyday you know, video uh, back and forth interaction use, but for broadcast, maybe not so. And what we're, what we're hearing is not only the fact that the quality is as good, but it takes an army of people to pull it off. Right. Because of all the different things they need to do. And there's a reliability and the scalability issues as well. Um, so as a result, while we're seeing, still seeing a huge increase in demand, the adoption, the, the, the ability of companies to actually deliver is being limited somewhat. Right. So the adoption is a big thing, right? If, if people yeah. don't... They don't, if they can't depend on the experience to be superior, they're likely to walk away. What, what's the issue in your opinion well, it with gets adoption? Back, it gets back to trying to cobble together all these different tools. It's time consuming, it's expensive, uh, the quality is not as good as it can be, it's not as scalable as it can be. It's prone to breakdown. Right. Um, and these live events are very, very high pressure events. You high profile. You get your CEO doing a live event in front of the entire company and something breaks down on could be that's, career ending. That's a, that's a career limiting uh, event. So there's a lot of ner a lot of nervousness about there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, John, are you seeing the similar types of things? I'm seeing I'm seeing things um, with in relation to adoption for sure. Uh, I wanted I took some notes so I could actually quote some of the, mm. the meetings that I had with some of the attendees at the event. Some of the things that I was hearing about what they were interested in, what their concerns were that. Um, there's a time now where uh, a lot of the technology they have purchased in the last five to ten years is coming end of life. Oh, yes. I've heard that a number of times myself. So yep. now mm -hmm. they're trying to make assessments on if I'm going to make another five to ten year investment, 
what should I be doing so that I am not duplicating technology two and three times? So, so that was one important thing I heard. Simplification was another thing, right? You mentioned you needed, you know, historically an army of people to deliver a webcast like this. And the idea is we'd like to do more webcasts, but we'd like to do it in a way that's easier yeah. with fewer people. Yeah. Um, it should be easier for the people who manage it to manage it, and it mm -hmm. should be easier for the people who use it to use it. So that was a big thing that I heard over and over. Um, and the last big thing that was a trend was, and I know this is going to resonate with you, is scale, scale, scale. Oh, yeah. I heard, I want to do more video. Mm -hmm. I need video to reach more people. But I am concerned about, frankly, taking down a network yep. mm -hmm. uh, during a large mm -hmm. broadcast. Yeah. And the thing is, we're these taking, broadcast sizes are not getting small. We're taking down my staff and trying what? to produce all this video. Right, yeah. right, right. So that is, um, that's kind of what I'm hearing is it's about scale, scale. from a geographic perspective as well. Because video is not only being done at the headquarters now. Because companies acquire other companies. AVISPL is a perfect example of that. Um, has grown through acquisition to a great extent. And now we have executives in all kinds of offices around the, around the country. Right. So actually being able to capture video from those folks, a lot of these are very senior people who have something to say that the employees want to hear. Right. And capturing video from these, uh, these people is very difficult because you either have to fly somebody there or you have to hire a crew to come in locally, which is expensive. It is. There's a lot of yeah. uh, financial and logistical challenges to historically do it. Yeah. But I think you're going to learn something today that starts to shift the tide on that a little bit. So why don't we talk a little bit about that, okay? So we have a solution. Um, Videolink has a solution. Kumu has a solution. And we're going to talk to you a little about those solutions and how those two work together to help resolve that enterprise video challenge. Right. Sounds why don't you, good. Why don't you talk a little bit about Kumu, John? Sure. So um, earlier I explained who Kumu was, you know, where we're based, the kind of customers that we sell. Um, let me pause for a minute and talk about the platform. Um, Kumu is a software manufacturer. We also have a software as a service component to our offering. And, and I want to just give you an idea of what that looks like from a deployment and a functionality point of view. Um, our technology can sit on premise. I know there's a lot of big customers that we have want that control. They want customization where they, security, they want and they well. want security, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to have that on prem. Um, there is a premium you pay for the luxury of being able to own and operate that. So the other way we can deploy the platform, and I think you'll see this at home, is that we have a cloud hybrid solution. So rather than everything residing on premise um, and then distributing that across the enterprise, we can take a certain amount of functions that would normally reside on premise and they can be put into a cloud and be made much more affordable. And the people who are subscribing and pulling streams down from that cloud can be pulled into a set of delivery options which mm -hmm. prevent the network from crashing, right? Because obviously, you know, when you're moving everything to the cloud, then everybody who wants to see that stream is oh, reaching up and pulling it down and Same you only want to have it pulled down once. And um, so those are, the, those are the kind of things that are part of our architecture on-prem, mm -hmm. in the cloud, hybrid versions of both. We'll talk in a few minutes about the use cases we do on top of that, but yeah. just at a high level, we're software company, cloud company, and we have a, a variety of different flexibility in terms of how we can bring them to the enterprise. ReadyCam, we talked about we're using it. Yeah, we're Maybe using you can right share now. with the team, yeah. or the team, the audience, um, <clears throat> What is it that we're using? What is what is it that we're sitting in right now to create okay. this webcast? So a ReadyCam is a is a on-premise, remotely controlled broadcast video studio. It's got an HD camera. It's got lights, full-point lighting. It's got high-quality broadcast audio. Mm. Um, in this case, we have an electronic backdrop behind it, which is showing our, our branding. Um, <coughs> it's got um, uh, it's got a recording device. It's got a teleprompter. It's got everything you need to be able to do a, to do a video production. Um, what makes it special and unique is it can be remotely controlled via the internet. So the, the, so, so the ReadyCam is, um, is, uh, is all, the, all the components of the ReadyCam can be controlled from a web browser um, from your office, from across the country, anywhere, because you're controlling it from the internet. Which again leads to a number of use cases which we'll be able to get to, which makes it really unique and, unique and special. Um, it also is live to the uh, outside world. So that the ReadyCam can uh, stream video out to broadcast networks like CNBC and, and, and MSNBC and deliver video in sub-half-second latency in a, in, a, um, in, a, um, uh, in a very, very high-quality, flawless stream. So it looks like the person on camera in the ReadyCam studio looks like they're on set with, right, the, actual, right. uh, with the actual program host. But it also can stream to uh, on RTMP 
site as well, which it comes where it comes into working together with the Kumu platform, because the ReadyCam can be used for webcasting and live events in the corporate world as well. Yes, for sure, for sure. So, um, let's talk a little bit about the use cases, John. Sure. So, um, how, how what are some of the use you've seen in, the, in, in the, our discussions and the conversations with clients where this might be of, uh, of, of, of use? Okay, so I mentioned earlier um, when I talked about the five basic functions, right? We help create, we help manage, we help deliver. There's a, there's a variety of things that we do, but to help a company do what? And quite honestly, there's very, there are very uh, familiar things that we do and support. The traditional CEO town hall, right? Mm -hmm. That's something where our technology plays a very significant role. But it's really not just limited to these live broadcasts where there's a one, one person in an auditorium broadcasting to lots of people. Um, any kind of video footage at all. We have people that use drones and they, uh, they use those drones to shoot video of physical plant towers and things like that and then they're basically posted on a channel mm -hmm. that inside the enterprise people, engineers can actually review daily footage. Um, we have uh, people in HR that record interviews with potential high, new hires. We have people who record from their uh, unified communication platforms, the, the Polycoms, Cisco's, um, uh, PECSIPs, I mean, you name it, basically anyone who wants to record collaboration, those are all examples of use cases. Um, so we take it in, we store it, we distribute it, but, but the production of the content itself to create high quality is really where I think the magic of, of, <coughs> exactly. of what I do and my, our company does and what you do in bringing them together provides an exponential amount of value uh, exactly. because, because you get so much more use out of the two together than you would if you were using them independently. Exactly. They both, they, both, they both expand on the capabilities of each other when they're used together. So, for example, as you mentioned, um, I talked about the, the fact that through a single, single GUI or web-based user interface, you can operate a full production utilizing the ReadyCam. The, the, the workflow benefits are enormous. The studio is pre-configured and set for one or two people on location like you're seeing right now. Right. So the setup time is much, much less than a typ typical traditional video production. Yes. You don't need a separate encoding technician to come in and produce a video. Literally all you need is a laptop with a browser interface. And quite frankly, with, with um, the, the tools that uh, Kumu offers, you can set up a presentation like a webcast we're doing right now from the Kumu portal, from their, your computer, and you can frame the shot and set up the uh, production for the ReadyCam and send the, uh, set, have the ReadyCam or instruct the ReadyCam to send the video signal to the Kumu platform and run a, a live production like you're seeing right now. Right. I, from one computer screen, you can do the entire thing. I feel like I'm sitting on the set <coughs> of, a, of a professional news organization doing this, mm -hmm. and we're literally without, on the floor. Without, without all the cameramen. Without all the cameramen, <laughs> but, but we have the lights and we have the audio, and it's, um, yeah. it, it, uh, it really provides a, a, an exceptional experience for the user, too, because um, we're able to get that experience of being in a news yeah. type of environment. Now, another application that I've been talking to a lot of folks about, a lot of the large corporations, is getting to the fact that they can, they can support the people in the headquarters location, but they're having trouble with the people in the remote locations. So what about, the, what about the, the team that's in Paris or the team that's down in Florida? And again, with the ReadyCam, because you can manage and remote all aspects of the studio remotely, you can put that studio in Paris, mm -hmm. okay? You can put it in, 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 in uh, Fort Lauderdale, for example, and run a production, and run a live production with the Kumu platform to 200 people live from your headquarters in Cleveland. Right. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of the two organizations working together. You can, you can, you can uh, set up an entire production end-to-end, -end, one single person potentially, do a full event. Talk about efficiency. Right, right. That kind of gets to what people have been asking about. Give me simplicity. Um, you know, I think we have a graphic here that will show of, uh, of the architecture of the integration of the two solutions, right? So we're in the ReadyCam studio uh, delivering this broadcast, but this broadcast is being delivered to you through the Kumu Cloud. So we're actually giving you a live demonstration now of the functionality of both platforms working mm -hmm. together. But what I think the value is, is that this professional environment l lends itself to the production of marketing videos or um, uh, product management videos of new products they want to introduce to the market or marketing people who want to push stuff out to social media or digital signage. All of that happens through us and it can be created in the ReadyCam environment. Exactly. And that is really the cool part because the Very quality special. is really, really good. Very special. Which leads to greater engagement, 
of employees, which leads to and then they can uh, measure alignment it. of the employees. It, it leads to greater transparency of the executive management. Yes. <coughs> All of which companies are looking for to be able to accomplish. They can use this environment and then use the, um, the metrics and the measurement capability we have of how long are people watching video that's created in a ready cam environment and I am yeah. you know those will be the um, probably more effective videos for that company so, so I think we've talked enough about ourselves um, we have. we've shared with you we share with you um, uh, the things that we've learned from uh, from uh, our time here at the show mm -hmm. uh, if someone wants to reach us how do they reach us John well um, I think they'll probably see on the uh, screen a couple of different ways to reach us maybe you can talk about your uh, email and URL addresses, yep, it, and that's on the screen as well. Okay. Um, if you're, if you're, we, we are again, we're owned by AVISPL. If you're an AVISPL client, you can call your AVISPL rep yep. about us. Yep. For Otherwise, sure. you can call VideoLink at the at the, uh, the 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 links that we've shown and the emails we've shown. I imagine the same thing with Kumu as well. Same thing with Kumu. If you're a Kumu customer and you want to know more about the video link integration, please contact your, your account director. Um, if you're not a Kumu customer, then please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to uh, have a conversation. You can reach me at, uh, I guess the information is up on the screen, but it's john.pool at kumu.com. And uh, I'd love to schedule time and explain more about the value and the benefits of what we've done together. Okay. Well, listen, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we tried to impart a little bit of information and, and knowledge that we've learned uh, about enterprise video here at, um, at the Infocom. We talked about it, the approach that we provided. It's one approach. Um, yes. But it's one approach that we found has been very successful and our clients are very uh, happy with. Uh, we provide some information on how to con contact us. Uh, we hope it's been valuable to you. Hope you've got uh, some information out of this, but it's been worth your time. Yep. And um, you have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Yep, thanks, everyone. All right.